Here is a uh, slide of a breast in a pregnant woman. It's called hyperplasia of pregnancy. In a way, this is kind of a n misnomer because uh, hyperplasia is often thought of as being a, a reaction or abnormal reaction to some type of process. In this case, this is a normal breast that normally undergoes hyperplasia with pregnancy. A good rule of thumb is to look at the blue areas, which are the lobules and the asini in the lobes, and compare them with the pinker uh, stroma. So here are the glands and here is the stroma. Normally for uh, purposes of rule of thumb, let's just say it should be about 50-50. Now in a woman who is uh, postmenopausal or atrophic, there will be a lot more stroma or the pinker area than there will be glands. In a, a person who is premenopausal and non-pregnant, let's say the ratio should be about 50-50. In here, you can see the lobular areas are generally more common than the stromal areas. So let's say that this is 60 or 70 percent. Of course, in a lactating woman, it may be 90 percent uh, glands and very, very little by way of stroma. So uh, let's blow it up a little bit. And remember, these areas of glands, which are separated by oh, relatively uh, thin amounts of fibrous tissue, are called uh, lobules. The actual asini are the uh, glandular units themselves. So this can be called an asinus. This can be called an asinus. This can be called an asinus. Here and here can be called an asinus. But the whole thing is a lobule and uh, you could see here that there is probably more by way of glandular lobules than there is stromal connective tissue so this is totally consistent with hyperplasia which is a normal type of hyperplasia of pregnancy also notice that there is very little by way of secreted milk material within these asini. There may be a little bit, but for the most part, they're not distended like thyroid follicles with milk. So the, although this is a pregnant breast, uh, there is probably not a significant amount of lactation here. That's all I want to say about this case.